Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Uh, all excited to talk more about joins with or clauses. It's going to be it's gonna be a real grand day for all of us here. Uh, this is, of course, part two of the joins with or clauses videos. Uh, the first one, uh, we talked about some simple stuff. It's kind of set up, uh, you know, the things that SQL Server can and can't do when there are or clauses uh, in, in the table with a simple join. Now we're going to talk about more complicated stuff and, of course, how you can fix the more complicated stuff. And, of course, because I like talking about it, we're going to talk about shortcomings in SQL Server's Query Optimizer because it's got those, Lord knows. Anyway, before we do that, if you would like to slap four bucks a month on my rent check, uh, you can click the link down in the video description below, and you can do that. Um, it'll, maybe, maybe it'll make you feel good. Um, you know, or maybe not, I don't know. Maybe, maybe hopefully you just forget about it for a while. Really, that's, that's what we're all hoping for. Uh, if, if, you, if four bucks a month is not what you have in mind for, for me, uh, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe. There's all sorts of great things. Uh, if you are, are in need of consulting for your SQL server, uh, any, all of these things, I am the best in the world at them. Anyone who tells you otherwise is a dirty, rotten liar. And as always, my rates are reasonable. Uh, training. I've got it. 24 or so hours of it. Beginner, intermediate, expert. All of, all of those things. You can get it for about 150 US dollars. Uh, that's the link, that's the coupon code, and they are helpfully glued together for you also in the video description. Lucky, lucky you. Uh, no more, no upcoming events until 2025, uh, probably later in the year, but uh, for now, uh, we can just go talk about what we came here to talk about, which is joins with or clauses. So, uh, joins with or clauses are one of my biggest pet peeves because the optimizer does have space to do this better. Uh, it just isn't there, right? It just doesn't do it, right? There's just no help for you when a join has an or clause in it. Uh, there's not like a special thing you have to do, or there's not a hint. There's not like a trace flag. Uh, all there is is query rewrites. And those query rewrites uh, are annoying because SQL Server's optimizer could figure it out. Just doesn't, it's lazy. Very lazy, lazy optimizer sometimes. So I've created some very generous indexes on the votes table and uh, two on the post table. And um, what we're gonna look at is the query pattern here. Uh, now it is a little bit confusing when the, the first time you see it, uh, because it is, well, I mean, not the most straightforward thing in the world, but um, I probably should have started this running before, before I started talking too much, right? Okay, seven seconds, not too bad. But uh, here's the execution plan. And it is one of, it's, this is one of those query plan patterns uh, that I try to train people to look for because this query plan pattern is always a sign that something bad is happening in your query. And that something bad is going to be a join with an or clause. So we're doing, I mean, it's a little bit of a funny query here, but it's one that you have to do with the Stack Overflow database. Um, because, um, you know, everyone who gives credit to Stack Overflow for like when it first started being like the cool, smart, like, whoa, rogue band of geniuses, don't like, they're doing everything on the cutting edge of cool and fun. They were crap at database design. Crappy. Just, Awful. We should have hired someone who knew what who knew what they were doing like this much, because the post table has all the posts in it. It has all the questions. It has all the answers. It has all the everything else. And what's what's really crappy? Oh my god! Is uh, like the the version of the post table that you see in like the Stack Overflow Data Explorer and the version of the post table that you see if you download the data dump is not nearly reality. If you saw that, if you saw the actual table in there, it is so much wider and more denormalized and awful. Um, it would, it, it, it would, it would make your even if you know nothing about normalization, it would make your head spin. But we have to join the post table to itself because uh, questions, right? Uh, those are these things. Uh, when you join them, you you need to join the post table to itself to find which questions have accepted answers. 
great. Good, good plan. Self joins. Uh, I'm, hey, I, I like I like those sometimes. Sometimes you do have to you, you do have to join yourself. But then when we join to the votes table, uh, what we're saying is where we need where the the either the question ID equals the post ID in the votes table or the accepted answer ID equals the post ID in the votes table. So we're looking to get votes on both the question, that's the ID, and the answer, which is the accepted answer ID, right? And uh, we, I don't know, threw this, I forget why I threw this on there. I think it tidied things up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe if I didn't put that on there, seven seconds would have been like 70 seconds. Uh, but then we're looking for uh, where p dot post type ID equals two, right? And uh, we're looking for where um, p two dot accepted answer ID is greater than zero. So we've done everything that we we can there. Now, uh, what makes this uh, challenging, or rather, like what the optimizer could do, is something like this. It could unroll the join from being this set of conditions to being this set of conditions, right? Like it, it could do that because it, it is fairly equivalent. Uh, it could also do this, but it, it kind of doesn't. Um, what's really interesting, but sort of difficult to describe well to the optimizer is that any given question can only have one accepted answer. So there's uh, no many-to-many -many relationship with that join. So these are things that the optimizer could do, but it doesn't. And this is the query plan pattern that I need to warn you about. And this is the query plan pattern that I want to show you is this is what happens. So we do two seeks into the post table, right? This finds, uh, this does our join, right? This finds our uh, questions or rather sends our answers with the questions with accepted answers and all that other good stuff. And then this is the join to the votes table. Now, what I want you to keep an eye on is the number of rows that come out of this. 3818497, okay? Remember that number, because you're gonna see it again in, right now. Way over here in the query plan, this is, this is most commonly what you will see in a query plan that has a bad join with an or clause in it, um, which is, means any join with an or clause in it. Uh, you're gonna see a constant scan with 381, Eight four nine seven rows come out of it, and then another constant scan with three eight one, eight four nine seven rows come out of it. That is the results of this twice, right? So we have one set for the p dot id column in the post table, and one set for the accepted answer id column in the post table, right? We have that many rows for both. After we join those two tables together, that's how many rows were produced. So each one of those columns. Uh, gets produced by this by these constant scan operators. Notice these don't touch a table; these sort of come out of nowhere, but they they really get fueled from here. So then SQL Server says I have to put those two results together. It essentially does like a union union all. Sorry. Uh, so this number doubles, right? Uh, if at least my math is correct. And then it sorts all that data. It puts all of those rows in order uh, so that it can merge duplicates. And um, it, note the estimates in here are all pretty wonky, right? Uh, of one, of one, of two, of two, of two. So where a SQL server <coughs> expects um, two rows to come across all this stuff, uh, it, we get way more than that. Now, I, I think uh, like Microsoft could start a little bit earlier in, like, in doing all this stuff by just like trying to get better estimates out of this part of the plan, because then maybe it wouldn't choose a nested loops join for this part of the plan. It's also entirely possible that this is an optimizer limitation and that SQL Server could not possibly do any other kind of join here. But then we seek into the votes table and uh, we, ex we seek on this expression 1024, right? Or sorry, um, we, we, we have a between thing Right, because we merge the intervals, so we go and find greater than expression 1023 and less than expression 1024. That's going to be the, the start and end points of the constant scan results after we've merged the intervals in. So we, every time we loop in, we go and we find those, th that range of, of columns. Now, it's bad enough that we have 
like this fake result set, right? The, from the from the constant scans that we loop and find stuff in here. But then like there's a sort of this other nested loops join here that also like takes this stuff, comes out of here and goes through all this, right? So it's like this loop, like even though it starts here, it kind of like really starts over here. So this all ends up taking about eight seconds, right? Or seven and a half seconds, which is pretty slow for a query. And like I said, SQL Server could unroll all this stuff and do it differently. Now, it's what we can't, it's, it's hard to describe this to the optimizer without um, a lot of really difficult constraining um, that every question, if it has an accepted answer, can only have one accepted answer. Um, if we were to use the parent ID column instead of accepted answer, it would be a slightly different story. Uh, because one question can have many answers, but only one of them can be the answer. So this is a great reason to normalize your data. Uh, this is one place where the Stack Overflow data design team uh, failed, right? Off, like just big thumbs down there was every question and every post are in the same post table. Um, I, I, I do have some stuff about what happens if you split those out. And I do have some other stuff about uh, what you do if you put the body column on another table. Um, but I don't know. I feel like that's worth money. So that might not go on YouTube. Now, part of the reason why this optimization space is difficult is because you would have to, you would have to unroll the query to look like um, one of these two things, right? Where bounty amount is null and exists. Select this on this, but this will give you uh, identical results to what you got before but without all that crazy stuff going on in it. This finishes in about 207 milliseconds, um, and that's, you know, arguably a lot better, right? And this, is, this filter is a startup expression predicate, so this is not the awful kind of filter where um, all the rows come out and then try to pass the filter. This filter only lets rows pass if, uh, if, 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 it, if uh, anything meets that criteria. So that's a nice thing in there, right? This is all good stuff. Uh, SQL Server handles this really well. And uh, because uh, the where clause in here is really only um, for uh, one, set, one set of things, it, it turns out a lot better. Now, you could also rewrite that in this way, which is even more complicated, uh, where you could use sort of a double exists with a union all, right? So rather than write this or clause, you could write this in and you could get good results back from this one. Uh, this query plan, uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, it takes about 385 milliseconds. Uh, there's one filter at the end here, uh, which I am not crazy about, where this is not null or this is not null. Usually this is the kind of stuff that I, I worry about in query plans, but in this case, it's okay. Um, we get a couple adaptive joins over here between the post table. Uh, well, sorry, between the votes table and the post table, right? So that all turns out okay. And then um, if we needed columns from the inner part, so like when we talked about exists and not exists and joins and all that stuff, one thing that I talked to you about was that when you uh, use exist, you can't project columns out of it. So if this were a more complicated query, you know, like, like for a lot of queries, I use count big just to make sure that I'm getting like the right number of rows back, right? Just, like basic starting point, are these results correct? One one thing that, you know, in like normal queries, people want to see data, right? They don't just want to count. They're not just like, oh, well, yeah, just if you just show me counts, I'm happy. They want to see like the actual stuff in there. So if you need to rewrite a query like this and you need to project rows out, cross apply is a really handy way of getting the same performance, but, all, but you can project columns out of the cross apply. I don't know why there's a space in here. That's, that's clearly... Clearly someone is sabotaging me. But if we write the query like this with the cross apply, uh, it's also pretty quick, 345 milliseconds. And if we needed columns to come out of the, this part of the query, we could get them. So if we like, so like you can see, like we count the p.id column that comes out of the apply in here, which is union all in here. So we're counting, we're able to reference the p.id column there, where if we tried to do this up here, we couldn't. So are these queries bigger? and longer and more complicated, yes. But sometimes that's what, you, that's what you need to, that's the kind of query you need to write for the optimizer to fully understand what you're doing. Um, it's, so you know, one thing that I say quite frequently with 
clients and in training and to just random passerby on the street is anything you do that makes your job easier makes SQL Server's job harder. Sometimes things that you do that make your life easier, SQL Server's like, oh yeah, well, I'm gonna make my life easy too. Take this query plan. When you start writing things out more verbosely, sometimes you can give SQL Server a better understanding of what you need to do, what data you need, what data you're trying to touch, and SQL Server can come up with better plans based on that. Um, shorter, shorter, simpler queries are not always faster queries. Um, you know, there, there, there are a lot of people who seem to feel that way, uh, and they write que these tiny little compact queries. They're, some of them just on a single line. <laughs> very long lines. But uh, like writing simple compact queries is good for simple compact logic. When your logic gets very complicated, uh, sometimes very short queries that just, you know, try to compact everything very small, it's not code golf. Sometimes the optimizer can't do a lot with those. Sometimes you have to be you have to write out more specifically what you're trying to do. And sometimes your queries might look like this. Sometimes your queries might uh, have extra touches of tables in them. But you can't, like, don't be afraid of trying this stuff because you might find queries perform much better when you are much more explicit to SQL Server about what you're after. So don't just stop at simple complex query because you're happy with simple complex query. Get just the performance, look at the query plan, see what happens when you spread things out a little bit. Give SQL Server a little room to think and breathe. You don't have to smother it all the time with these weird queries. Now, um, one thing that uh, I've talked about uh, a few times, maybe not in this video, but in the last video, uh, before I decided to split this up into two videos, that's why there might be something up in there that seems a little weird, but um, is case expressions in joins and where clauses. Uh, we're gonna talk about that next. That is why this is 12 and the little tab next to it says 13 case expressions. So we're gonna talk about those next. And uh, we're also going to look at some rewrites uh, for those. Some of those look similar to these, other than, other than them look similar for to other things that we've talked about in the series, but uh, it helps reinforce that um, you're not writing SQL Server queries correctly, and you need to start. So, sorry to break it to you, but you know what? Um, at least it's not terminal. It's just temporary. It can be cured, don't worry. Uh, without surgery, hopefully, <laughs> via hammer. Uh, all right, cool. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something, and I will see you over in the next video about case expressions, and uh, you're going to learn a lot, so watch it, and don't skip stuff. You heard? All right, goodbye.